Hello, today's lesson is titled A General Approach to Solving RC and RL Circuits. We know that we're going to have a differential equation because of the element constraints. We wish to look at a general mathematical approach for that. So I have a circuit drawn here. We have a resistor, a capacitor, and time-varying voltage source. Now, by Kirchhoff's current law, we can say that IR is equal to IC. Let's call that I. By Kirchhoff's voltage law, we can say that minus Vs is plus Vr plus Vc is equal to zero. Those are the connection constraints, Kirchhoff's current law and Kirchhoff's voltage law. What about the element constraints? Well, for the element constraints, of course, for the resistor, we can say that Vr is equal to the resistor current times the resistor value. And we can say that I sub C is equal to C dVc dt. Let's replace V sub R by Ohm's law. I times R. And now let's use the element constraint to say that I is equal to C dVc dt. Actually, that's the element constraint plus Kirchhoff's current law. So I'll have C dVc dt times R plus Vc is equal to zero with the Vs term. Now, presuming that I know the value of V sub S, R, and C, that is, I know the circuit for which I'm going to apply the solution, then I have one equation for one unknown, and that unknown is the capacitor voltage. Let's put that source voltage on the other side, the equal sign, and write that Vc plus Rc dVc dt is equal to Vs of t. And we would like to be able to solve for the capacitor to voltage as a function of time for a whole variety of source voltages, Vs of t. Hence the title of today's lesson, A General Approach to Solving an RC Circuit or an RL Circuit. If we set up an RL circuit with a current source, we'd have a very similar expression here, except we have I sub L we'd have, that we'd solve for. We'd have a current source, and instead of R times C, we would have L over R. So uh, the solution method will apply either to RC or to RL circuits. It may seem that that circuit we drew on the board consisting just of one source, one resistor, and one capacitor is so simple that the solution would just have very limited value. But let's remind ourselves that by Thevenin's theorem, any linear source circuit can be expressed as the Thevenin equivalent, one voltage source in series with one resistor. So really our solution will be quite general. Whatever linear circuit C is connected to can be expressed as what we see here. We derive the equation on the bottom of the screen using connection constraints and element constraints. Note that it's a first order differential equation and that the highest order derivative is a first order derivative. And now we want to describe a general solution approach for this type of equation. We've also mentioned RL circuits in today's lesson and here's a corresponding schematic. Again, this is more generally applicable than one might first think because any linear source circuit can be expressed in terms of a Norton equivalent, current source in parallel with the resistor. Connection constraints and element constraints will yield the equation on the bottom of the screen. You may wish to use KVL, KCL, and those element constraints to derive it as an interesting exercise. The voltage across the capacitor is referred to as the state variable for the capacitor. V sub C determines the state of energy stored in the capacitor. Energy is 1 half CV squared. So since power is equal to the time rate of change of energy, this means the energy cannot change instantly except for the hypothetical situation where we have infinite power available. So that means the capacitor voltage can't change instantly either. We'll use that later when we apply initial conditions to solving circuits. For inductor, the energy is 1 half L times IL squared. I sub L is the state variable. Looking at the equation on the bottom of the screen, both the first order RC and first order RL equation are the same general form. 
On one side of the equal sign, we have a source of electrical energy, either a voltage source or a current source. This is referred to here as x of t. Could be a step function, ramp function, sinusoidal, etc. The y of t that we see appearing on the other side of the equal sign is a state variable, either the voltage across the capacitor or the current through the inductor. And Tc, which we will see later, corresponds to a time constant, is either R times C or L divided by R. Let's bring some mathematics to bear on solving this equation. Let's multiply both sides of the equation by 1 over the time constant times the exponential raised to time divided by the time constant. Next, I'd like to draw your attention to the left-hand side of that resulting equation. Note that this is the derivative of the product of y of t times e to the t over tc. In other words, if we apply the chain rule to the derivative of that product, we get exactly those two terms on the left-hand side of the equation. So we can replace the left-hand side by that derivative. And that is what has been done here. Now the next step in our solution will be to take the integral of both sides of this equation. So both sides of the equation are now shown within an integral, and the integration is over a dummy variable z. We take the upper limit of the integral to be at whatever value of time we are interested in, lowercase t, and the lower limit of integration is zero. Looking at the left-hand side of this equation, the integral of the derivative of a function is just that function. Looking now on the right-hand side, we see that we can take the constant t sub c, either r times c or l over r, out of the integral. Now, if I could draw your attention once again back to the left-hand side, applying those limits, we have y of t times e to the t over tc minus y of 0, which is the initial value of the state variable, times e to the 0 power. e to the 0 power is, of course, just equal to 1, unity. Now, on this screen that we see here, we've just multiplied that equation through by e to the minus t over tc, and then arranged the terms to have y of t by itself on one side of the equation. Y of t is what we wish to solve for. It's either the capacitor voltage or the inductor current. And we see that it's partly due to the initial conditions, in other words, the value of the state variable at t equals zero, and partly due to the source of electrical energy. So we can summarize the results of the general form of solution to first order RL and RC circuits as follows. The capacitor voltage or the inductor current, as the case may be, is equal to the sum of two terms. One term arises as the result of the initial value of the capacitor voltage or the inductor current. And the other results from the voltage source or current source that's in the circuit. That second term requires an integration. We can view this as a three-step process solution. Determine the initial value, determine the time constant, which is the Thevenin resistance times C, or L divided by the uh, Norton resistance, and then applying the integration to the time-varying source in the circuit. In future lessons, we'll have the task of working through the solution for particular types of uh, time-varying voltage sources and current sources, sinusoids, step functions, and so forth. But before we end this lesson, let's consider the simplest of values of x of t. We always have time to pick the lowest hanging fruit from the tree. And that case will be when the current or voltage source is zero. In that case, the state variable response is referred to as the natural response. And as you can see, we just need to know the initial value and the time constant to determine the capacitor voltage or inductor current as a function of time. Well, with this, we'll end our lesson on a general solution for first-order RL and RC circuits. Perhaps the lesson may have seemed to you rather short on circuits and long on mathematics, uh, but it does lay the basic groundwork for later lessons dedicated to particular types of time-varying voltage and current sources, and I do want to thank you for watching. In the lesson, we developed an equation for either the capacitor voltage or the inductor current on one side of the equation, on the other side, the equal sign are two terms. One of those terms is there as a result of the initial voltage across the capacitor terminals or the initial current through the inductor. And the other is present because of the voltage source or current source in the circuit. 
In terms of intuitive insight, we might say that the result is partly due to the initial energy stored in the capacitor or inductor, and partly due to the source of energy in the circuit. And the equation we develop show how to express that mathematically.